Dr. David Sinclair has responded to my resveratrol video, and I wanted to share his response with you so that you've got another data point when you're making your decision as to whether to supplement with resveratrol or not. Let's get into it. Just to give a quick recap of my resveratrol video, and you can skip this by going to this timestamp. In my resveratrol video, I explained that the idea behind taking resveratrol is to activate an enzyme called Sirtuin-1. I went through the history of that research, the excitement in the early 2000s, and how Dr. David Sinclair sold his research to the pharmaceutical company GSK for $720 million. We then looked at the controversy behind that initial research, as more and more papers started to be published after that massive deal with GSK. Essentially, it was found that when the experiments are conducted correctly, there is no lifespan extension for either worms or flies when the SIR2 gene is overexpressed. Under certain conditions, removing the SIR2 gene from yeast can actually extend lifespan. We went through how the original resveratrol studies were flawed because of a fluorescent dye. It wasn't the resveratrol that was activating Sirtuin-1. The experiment was getting mixed up because of that fluorescent dye. As a rebuttal to all of this, the Dr. Sinclair lab published a paper in 2013 showing that under very, very, very specific conditions, resveratrol can activate Sirtuin-1, but those conditions, they're not really present in the human body. They are present, though, in the lab. And to confirm this, in 2020, a paper that used the latest CRISPR technology confirmed that resveratrol doesn't activate Sirtuin-1. Instead, it stresses the cell. When the Meticulous Interventions Testing Program, who did consult Dr. Sinclair about dosage of resveratrol, there was no lifespan extension seen. There's no human data showing that resveratrol has any benefit, and we do have human data suggesting that there might be an increase in cholesterol levels when taking resveratrol, and it looks to interfere with exercise benefits. We've also got researchers such as Dr. Matt Caberline, who was one of the original Sirtuin researchers, speaking out against the Sirtuin and resveratrol theory. And after all of these failures, with millions of dollars spent on human studies, GSK, they shut the doors. So how did Dr. Sinclair respond to all of this? Well, on Twitter, someone asked him about it. They said, Hey Dr. Sinclair, it looks like Dr. Stanfield made a recent YouTube video regarding resveratrol and the studies leading up to it failing. Can you address or clarify his position on these studies? It's confusing information for us regular people. To which Dr. Sinclair replies, It's confusing, I know. Misinformation is everywhere. This is helpful, and he links a 2006 paper. So 2006, that's before all of the criticisms came about around the original resveratrol and Sirtuin research. So all of this started blowing up around 2009 to 2010. So he hasn't clarified anything. It's simply just a 2006 paper, again before all of this controversy kicked off. That tweet got 16 likes, and I replied to that, saying that this is a 2006 paper. It would be nice if you could address the multitude of other papers published since then regarding resveratrol's lack of benefit and likely harm, to which that has now got 49 likes. Now, I've been waiting to make this video for Dr. Sinclair to respond to this tweet, but unfortunately, he hasn't. Dr. Matt Cableline also weighed in about Dr. Sinclair saying that this whole situation is confusing, to which Dr. Matt Cableline says, lol, I'm not confused. Now, the door is always open for Dr. Sinclair to come onto my channel to discuss this controversy around resveratrol, and I have reached out to him multiple times in the past. And again, I'm just reporting Dr. Sinclair's response so that you've got another data point when you're making your decision as to whether to use resveratrol or not. As for me, I'm going to continue making videos around the data on how to extend health span, and I do it through the lens of the evidence pyramid. This way there's nowhere to hide and it doesn't rely on people's opinions or egos. It's simply presenting the best available data so that we can make the most informed choices. I'll also continue fundraising for my rapamycin clinical trial, which is almost ready to be submitted for ethics approval or IRB approval. Please let me know in the comment section what do you think about Dr. Sinclair's response, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel. So until next time, thanks very much.